Ben Garrett, the Ole Miss Spirit, Kermit, uh, a lot of your current players are out there right now. What kind of conversations have you had with them? And what has the response been? You, to them? you know, as I went through the process and I have two teams for a while. And uh, the only two things I was really worried about is, is my guys at Middle Tennessee and the Ole Miss players. And so we had a lot of great positive conversations with all of them and, and talked about, you know, the process. And, and I would be down as soon as our team stopped playing. And so we on the phone today we had a, a great team meeting. Uh, they've all been very, very receptive. Uh, I think they know they're at a great university, and it's just a start, you know. So it's, and I told them, I said, guys, I don't come into one team meeting and think I know everybody and can figure somebody out. This is going to be a, a process. I said, but what you're going through here is natural because I just left a, a locker room at Middle Tennessee, a culture of winning, and my guys are going through the same thing there. And so it's a healing process uh, here. But they they were real receptive, and I, I really enjoyed seeing them today. Carmen Neil McCready with uh, Rivals.com. I know. Along those lines, you don't know yet, but do you expect any attrition or are you, are you hopeful there's not any? Yeah, you're hopeful it's not, you know, and so, but it, sometimes attrition, it, it occurs with, with change, you know, and uh, we're sure going to, like I said, I, I just met with them as a group, and so then I'm going to be on the road, you know, in and out recruiting, but the biggest thing for me is to get to spend some time with them individually. And so those are the things that, that are my staff and I will do over the next, you know, four to five days. Kermit Parrish Alford with the Daily Journal. Obviously, your, your recent success has been well documented in Middle Tennessee. Eight or nine years there, it looks like it took to really reach that level. What were those seasons like? What was going on there and building to the level that you have it now? Yeah, you know, and uh, we're not going to have eight or nine years here. I promise you that. But it was a situation where we, we took over a program that was it was really, really struggling. They went to a new league. Uh, I hate to make excuses. We went through a ton of injuries for about a four- or five-year period. We win in 18, 19 games. But you know what? It's the life of the mid-major about having to win your conference tournament. Everybody sees NCAA upsets, you know, and everybody says, wow. Well, you know what? Those are the upsets in conference tournaments. All these teams you watch in NCAA tournaments, you know what? They all got beaten in their conference tournaments, most of them. But nobody – it doesn't really matter because they're in already. And so it's just the magnitude of that tournament. And, uh, and But we're proud of kind of what we did over the last seven or eight years. Tony Morales from the Fayette Ledger. The expectation here is to make the NCAA tournament every year. How do you make that happen? Well, number one is that the, the strength of returning players is that we, we've got to improve those guys. There's talent in that room. There's talent. And, uh, and so we, we've got to individually get their development to go up. Uh, the culture of bringing other guys in in the spring is going to be critical for it. And you're in a league that maybe next year eight or nine teams will go. And so, you know, there's, we have a system of play. And it's a system of play we know how to recruit to. We know exactly what we think Ole Miss needs to be successful in this system of play. And, uh, and I just think with this product of sale, we're going to get good players. Davis Potter, Oxford Eagle. You put together your rosters at Middle Tennessee with a lot of transfers. I know that's part of just the climate of the game today, but do you anticipate – Doing the same thing here, do you go out and sign and develop more high school players? I, the strength is Giddy Potts, high school player. Reggie Upshaw, high school player. Ed Simpson, a high school player from uh, uh, from St. Martin's High School. So the, we're, we're going to do it with, with, with a balance. Here in the SEC, you need to do it with high school players. You need to do it with high school players, but you know what? You can, under the SEC guidelines, you can go out. When I was at LSU, we signed the number one junior college player in America three years in a row. So you can do that. And then there may be a, a grad transfer out there this year that fits a whole need. But I think as your program gets hold, we're going to do it with dominating with high school guys. Where are you in terms of your assembling your staff? How far along are you? Yeah, we're, we're going to – I brought two guys with me, and they'll be officially introduced. I don't know if we can officially introduce them uh, today off of my staff. They're good. Uh, are you we can. good? Okay. Yeah. Um, is I'm going to bring uh, Ronnie Hamilton and Win Case with me off of my staff. Greg Grenzing uh, is going to be the interim coach at Middle Tennessee, and he is interviewing uh, for the job that I left. And I'm going to have a process of interviewing all the guys that are on the current staff. And I know all of them. I, I know Reem. I, I know Tony. I know Ty. I know all those guys. And then, and then decide, you know, and we'll do a national search also for, for the third full-time spot. And uh, the one thing that Ross has done you now, the, the, he has given us the, the means to go out and hire as good a staff as anybody in the SEC. And we're going to do it. But I feel great with our guys here.
Kermit, Brian Rippey on West Fort Psychology. Murfreesboro is so, somewhere you've been for you know over a decade and a half. At what point did you know this was kind of the right step to take? You know, as, as the process goes on, and when I met with uh, Chancellor Vitter and, and Ross, it was just one of those things that I knew it was the right place for me. Like I said up there, I wanted to align myself with leadership that I trust, aggressive thinking leadership, and then obviously a leadership that is committed. They're all in with Ole Miss basketball. And so it's, the infrastructure is there. And, uh, and obviously the, the things that I feel about coming home to Mississippi, being in the Southeastern Conference, it was all just a, it was a perfect fit for me. Courtney, Courtney Smith with the Riverwalk coach. You know, you, Ross B. York handed you the red blazer. Is there any timeline on when you're going to, you know, try it on and make sure it fits? I'll wear my first game <laughs> next year, but I'm going to wear it out. I promise you that now. I've got it. I, I think it'll fit, but I'm going to wear that thing proudly. It'll be real soon. Now that you've played, you had that game yesterday and you've done this introductory thing today, how would you describe the past 24 hours? You know, it's like I said, it was it was emotional. You know, last night in the locker room, and uh, you know, Louisville played great, and uh, I was so proud of our team, what we did throughout the year, and uh, and then you you leave that and you ride home and you kind of reflect on that bus ride to Murfreesboro, and then you get up this morning, you start packing and you start thinking about uh, the players here, and uh, so it has been. It's it's been a 24 hours of great energy, but just mentally, you know, a lot of different emotions go through. I wonder kind of labor the, the point about you know the constructing the roster, but uh, how do you kind of approach that when you don't necessarily know if there's going to be attrition? You know, you don't know if the kids signed in November are going to stick around. Uh, recruiting to the amount of spots. I mean, how do you start to kind of figure that out? Later? That, that's just the ball juggling of, of new jobs, and everybody goes through it. I don't care if you're a new SEC football coach, a new basketball coach at Middle Tennessee, Ole Miss. It, it, it's, it's the landscape of it. All we can do is this. We've talked to all of the, the signees, you know, in, in the fall, and, and they feel very good. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to stop. We'll go see Zach Naylor. We're going to go see Sorrell in Florida and see his mom. And, and so those are the things that we just – that's just part of the process. I mean, there, there's no easy things in transition. There's no givens. And so it's just uh, – but I'm, we're going to take our time. We're not going to rush into things. We're not going to sign guys that we don't think fit here. We're going to take our time, and we're going to do our due diligence with the guys that are here and with the guys that they've signed in the, in the fall. So there are people who believe that it's difficult to, uh, to recruit to Ole Miss, a hard place to bring in talent. What's your uh, assessment of that? Do you see obstacles? What do you think that would be like for you? This is not recruiting talk. I'm just talking about a guy that's watched this. Uh, I mean, how, how, how is it difficult here? You play in the best basketball league in America. You're this unbelievable place, maybe the best college town in all of sports in America. You've got per seats that's the nicest arena, the Tui Center. I mean, I, I mean I'm in heaven, I think. We're, we're carrying a big bat. I mean, we're carrying a big bat in recruiting. I know a lot of people in the SEC have them too, but I just, I just think we've got an experience that you can really, really sell. Did you ever wonder if this day would come? You talked about building a national brand, and you did, and you had big NCAA <clears throat> tournament wins and stuff, and yet these jobs, these kinds of jobs always seem to elude you a little bit. Did you ever give up hope that you'd get to this place? Well, you know, and I don't mean this egotistically, I, did, I didn't chase a lot of stuff. I mean, you, you talked to all of my, my president and my AD at Middle Tennessee. I mean, I'm telling you guys, I felt great where I was. I felt comfortable. And maybe Bob McKillen at Davidson or Rick Bird at, at Belmont, Mark Few at Gonzaga. I, I felt good. And it, but it was just when this opportunity happened here, I just think it just fit. And then when I had started having conversations with Ross and, and talking to Keith and Chancellor Vitter, I just knew that this was the opportunity I hoped they would offer me, and, and they did. Tori News Watch Old Mask. How much of a factor was it? Of you know the you said the life of the mid major. How much of that was a factor of trying to get to a Power Five conference, and, and, and as far as your your approach coming here? You know the, the thought process goes through your mind. Uh, our fans asked me, and our media asked me there, the day of selection Sunday when your team didn't get in. Everybody thought we'd get in. Is that when you told Ole Miss? No, that it, it's a process, you know. But it, but it does. Go through your mind, because in 2012, we should have got in. We didn't. 2014, we won our regular season championship. Didn't even go to the NIT. And then this year, you know, we did. Every, we thought everything right. So uh, I just think that everything is in place here, and it's going to be good to be in a league. You know, now I'm going to probably change my tune from the mid-major coach to the power five coach, right? So uh, it'll be a little different tone, maybe.